Well good afternoon everyone, um, welcome to my how to paint channel. Um, I'm actually going to look at buildings this time. Um, I'm going to use my um, pink pig um, um, pad with Bockingford paper. If you remember, if those of you that have seen the tree video, um, it's a basic sky tree in a field. Now, um, if you've not actually viewed that one, then please do so, um, because it would be nice to paint this before you go on to this next stage, because what I'm going to do in this next stage is to add not only uh, the building, not only are we going to have the sky and the tree uh, and the field, I'm going to show you how to paint a building with that. Um, so really, that's what this um, video is all about. Uh, so if you've not um, um, viewed my how to paint uh, trees in a field, in a landscape, please do so, that's on, on the channel too. Okay, well, first thing I need to do with a subject like this is to get the background on. I'm going to paint a similar sky to the sky I had last time. It's quite an interesting sky, in as much as um, we've got some blue and, and some clouds. And all I did for that, simple, when you paint buildings, and using a reasonably large brush, there again, it's not a very big piece of paper, um, using a reasonably large brush, and I'm damping the paper. I've got a little bit of colour in that where I've freshened up my uh, paints, but um, uh, that's not a problem, that little dry light, very light, and I'm damping, if you notice, around the building. Not a bad idea to do that, because that way you end up with um, uh, with a pure white building as a backdrop. Now I'm only painting down as far as that distant field and into those trees there. There we go. Now I'm allowing that to soak in, quite a simple process. Um, while that's soaking in, I'm going to mix a, a warm cloud colour. Well, I'm going to use raw sienna, very, very weak, plenty of water, although I'm going into wet paper. And I'm going to use a little, um, let's use alizarin, crimson. Uh, there we go. And that will give us quite a, an orange colour. It's always nice to have a bit of tone bit of colour into the um, um, the clouds and I'm going to have sort of three sets of clouds and notice how the, I just drop the colour in and it's running, it's flowing, I've got the board at a bit of an angle but not a great deal and um, now once you've got the where the clouds are going to be, you know it looks a bit light but it will dry a lot, uh, sorry a bit dark but it will dry a lot lighter, now I'm going to go in with the same part of the palette, doesn't matter if you get a bit of yellow in there, with ultramarine blue. Fairly strong mix, we are walking, working wet into wet, and there will be a cloud there. And what I'm going to do, paint around those areas and around the white spaces as well. Now, I'm going to have a bit of blue there coming down into the distance, painting over the tree. So there's a small cloud there. Now I'm going to paint this blue across the top of the building and the reason for that is, there's one cloud there, a funny shape, there we go, just shape the clouds into an appropriate shape as we did before, a little bit lighter for the sky behind the large tree and if you can remember I actually said smaller patches of blue which denote, don, denotes smaller um, clouds into the distance. Bring that right the way down, not going to have anything too complicated there, and down as far as, just leaving a little bit of that yellow, and that's all we need to do for, for a sky. Um, next thing will purely be the landscape. Well I'm going to use raw sienna for that, so no, there might be a touch of blue in there, not a bad idea, the touch of blue, mainly raw sienna, and really, if you can, before that dries. And you run across the landscape like that. So that's your distant field. And uh, 
There may be a bit of distance there, so let's put that in while it's still damp. See where I've combined the two, painted around the building, quite simple. Now, as I come forward, I'm going to add a touch of cadmium yellow. I'm going to actually leave the track unpainted. I'm only painting purely the area of greenery. Okay, in front of the building. Notice how I'm working across the paper. Okay, quite warm again today in here. Always is with the lights on. And painting across the paper. And um, now I'm adding a little bit more blue. Uh, sorry, a little bit more cadmium yellow. And I'm going to add a touch of ultramarine with that. So we start to get a slightly greeny sort of tone to it. So a little bit yellowy green in the distance, but stronger green. And what I'm doing to one side of the track, I'm doing to, I'm saving for the other as well. And I'm just tapering that track just a tad more, just to give it perspective. And um, that's it. Now, and paint the way the land lays. Uh, it lays in there, so paint in, right, and it, then it goes across. Now as I work into the foreground, I'm adding Prussian blue to that. The reason is because if you look, it's a much stronger green with Prussian blue than I would get with the um, ultramarine. And paint across, and that gives a more local blue, a uh, blue-green, which is far better than the yellow-green, but sometimes it is yellow in the distance. And then finally, to complete that, I'm going to add more Prussian, more cadmium, and burnt sienna, because that will give me a lovely dark, lovely dark, what I'd call a warm green. And if you remember, in the last, when we actually painted the other um, painting uh, of the tree in the field, we had a foreground sort of um, shadow, really, and it it may, in effect, be all we'll need for a foreground shadow. Now, I'm going to have light coming from the left on the front of the building, so, in actual fact, there will be some little touches of shadow on this track, the centre of that grass verge. Um, Okay, so that's that. That's really all you can do with that. It's you, and you just allow it to dry. See how as it dries, you're getting the 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 um, the growing up. You know, a little tuft there, as if it's a bit of dark area. Then it's going into light. Got a clump there. See how it's drying up into a hard edge there. It's because I painted across. If you um, were to paint sort of down, you'd get lines, horizontal lines, and it would it would look as if the grass stood stands up. You know, the ground stands up. You want the ground to lay flat. And if you paint across, you can see a varying change there, of little tufty possible grasses. You know, it watercolour more or less does itself really. You know, see how the clouds have have pulled in where it's wet. You know, it sucked the water in and the paint. Um, you know, and see how that sucked that up there. Um, you know, you don't do it with the brush. You allow the paint. Once you, if you can just learn to lay the paint on correctly, it just does it itself. You know, it does take practice, but um, um, you know, it's not something that you can't learn. Um, no problems with that. Now, I was saying that to um, to people I teach to. Now, because it's warm in here. Got a feeling most of you may need a bit more drying time, but it's very warm in here, so I'm going to go straight in with the tree. Now I'm going to paint this what I'd call in real time. In other words, uh, I'm not explaining too much because that was done on the other um, video that I did. Um, but it's pretty basic stuff really. Um, and a tree grows up, and it's, it's a summer tree. It's in full leaf, starting off in the centre. I'm just trying to get a sense of the way the branches would overhang. Uh, I'll leave a few more gaps this time than I did on the other tree. Notice so how I'm just dragging across the paper. A few more gaps at the top. A little bit more solid perhaps down that lower side of the tree. 
it's quite a large tree. There we go. And then we have a branch coming out there. You know, the, the type of tree, well, could be an oak, could be an, an, an ash, but it's one of the larger type of trees. Now I'm going to add more blue and more brown to give me that nice sort of brown, dark touch of autumn to it perhaps, which I never had on the other one. You know, don't be afraid to vary your your tones and colours, and I'm dropping in while it's still damp, because that is quite crucial. Uh, if you don't, then the chances are um, you don't get those lovely soft edges. Notice the way I'm using it, just touching in on the edges there now, just to get a sense that there's some leafing, you know, just falling. Um, may go one tone darker, um, just to, um, to to make certain that we get the real strength within that uh, green area. Really, really dark there. Just uh, not picking up much darker, but just one or two. Don't get too dark too early. But that, that's there we go. I think that's sufficient for that. Um, now the next thing would purely be um, the hedge and grasses um, and uh, quite easily same colour Prussian blue, cadmium yellow, uh, not too damp a brush and I'm going to have a bit of a hedging there like that and break up this hedging you know um, the tree is actually going to sit behind this, this piece of hedging um, I've just took the moisture off of the brush. I want to cut in down the side of that building, but this is a sort of a shrub sort of tree. But I need it dark against the light building. There again, I'm cutting in around there. I can always darken up um, that. Uh, and I'm going to have just a bit of balance, a bit of um, dry brush work on the end there. And then finally, coming in from the left, which will be in shadow, will be <coughs> another tree, <coughs> but this one will be quite dark. And all I want to do is just shake the brush and just run across the paper like that and just have them overhanging branches. And then straight where the hedge meets the grass, fairly straight, and then spiky down as far as the building. I'm just coming up a bit higher with that. I don't want the, the, the eye to run there, the eye's got to run round that way. And then finally, to complete that, I'm just going to put in um, the branches. And I use a smaller brush that points well. Um, nothing, uh, it's a number six that points well. Um, and um, I'm going to use burnt sienna and a touch of ultramarine just to get that dark rich um, brown that I think I would see for this and you can see the trunk nestling into the top of that um, don't see where that hits the ground on this one remember we softened the other one then I'm going to bring that trunk up from there and a branch coming out there and there that branch may very well continue up to there this branch then comes up there and that heads out somewhere there. There's another branch possibly in there. Um, let's just take a branch from the centre there. Uh, that'd be nice. Um, we, we're not quite, it's not dark, but it um, uh, may be I need, haven't looked at it again, to have a branch coming up there like that. The main branch just twisting perhaps that point. There we go and just to give that nice bit of character um, and then the very small twiggy branches just one or two, I'm not going to put many in, um, some of them bigger than others, that that actually gives it character if you notice, you know, gives that old tree a bit of character, it's not, it's, you know, that's how I would paint a tree, uh, whatever I saw in an old tree um, to have its own character. That's the gate opening. Then we have posts that sit in the greenery, one there, and a cross section 
nothing too um, detailed, um, but um, there we go. So this is that really. Um, nothing too fussy there, and I'm going to allow that to dry. So quite a simple process. Uh, leafing. Uh, I put a lot of trunk in, whereas the other one I had very little trunk. So sometimes you see, you know, it's more leafing over the front of that one, that tree. This one uh, is there's a lot more trunk. There's more leafing behind. Sometimes you see that on trees. Paint what you see a tree as you as you see it. Don't just keep doing the same old tree time after time. Okay, so that's basically um, the composition, and um, we'll start on the next one. We'll start looking at the building.